Good morning. Good morning to all of you. It is great to see you this morning. Good morning to all of you that are watching from home as well. Uh, we're excited that you get to be with us online, virtually. That's the power of technology. Some of the announcements, you have a little uh, extra page inside of your bulletin. Just want to highlight a few things. Uh, today, after the service, we have a luncheon just next door in the dining room. So please stay and join us. Alex has prepared some good food for us. We have a Christmas Eve service. That's December 24th at 5 p.m. We'll love to see you here as well. And uh, adult ministries will resume in January 11. And the youth classes and music classes will resume January 18. Um, Ties and offerings, uh, after the meeting, if you have some ties and offerings, make sure you deposit in the back inside of the red kettle because that's the time. You've seen those red kettles. We're actually coming to the last week of the red kettle campaign. If you still have a few hours that you would like to give it as ringing the bell, we can definitely use your help. You can let me know after the service if you would like to do that. Uh, this is like our busiest week. Uh, my wife and all her volunteers did an amazing job at the distribution of the angel tree. How many kids, Captain Claudia? 560 kids were uh, adopted by the community, and we're very thankful for everybody that helped, everybody that adopted the angels, uh, the, the, the folks that made it possible for us to have the old sheriff's department as the warehouse for this year. So there's a, a, a lot of blessings, a lot of blessings that we have seen throughout this Christmas season. We have seen the hand of the Lord all over what we're doing here in Port Charlotte. And we're also thankful for each one of you. Uh, this place is a better place because of each one of you. With that, we're going to have a call to worship. There will be a video uh, titled Emmanuel. And then right after, we're going to have the Nativity presentation by the Rosanos. That's us.
He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Nothing was made without him. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. The whole world is made through him, except the world doesn't recognize him. But there are others who do believe in him. They run to him from the fields and journey from far away, carrying only hope and curiosity. They didn't know where the road would lead or what others would think of them. But they believe in his name. And to these, he gives the right to become children of God. The word became human and he made his home among us so we could see his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. God made known to us, not on a throne of power, but in a cradle of peace. Emmanuel, God with us. Oh, there we go. I'm so glad to share with you this morning about the nativity in our home. I love nativity sets. I have a lot of nativity sets in, in our Christmas uh, areas all around the house. And throughout the years, we have brought nativities and I've put them around the fireplace when we've had one. I've put one in the kitchen, in the living room, in the dining room, um, different types of nativity sets all over the place. And some of them I've gotten from the store, some of them have been gifts, and some of them I've gotten from the family store, um, which I'm even grateful for that. I wanted to share with you today about two nativity sets, and my, I don't, and my husband might have some words, I think. Um, and I want to share with you my favorite one. My favorite nativity set is this one. It's a little tower, and they go, um, there's a little people, I think, I've had this one since probably about 2005. Um, it was a gift. Uh, it was my first nativity that I received, and it was a gift from one of my students that I had back when I was a middle school teacher. So it was one of the gifts from one of my middle school, teach middle school students. And I like it because it lights up. There's an angel on the top. All the kings and the shepherds are coming up to see baby Jesus. And then also... It has a little song. <laughs> so I've loved having this. You know, sometimes, sometimes the little people's heads have come off because we got children in our home. <laughs> so thankful for glue that has um, put them back on there. But as I was saying, I, we have several of uh, nativities around the house. And sometimes the nativities move in the middle of the night. I don't know how, I don't know where, but sometimes I find all my kings just with baby Jesus. Sometimes I find the whole nativity, as you see on the dining room table, um, on, the, on the living room table, and all around the place. Did you want to share something? Well, I'm thankful for my wife that she is good in keeping all the decorations. That's part of, part of my family is that we didn't have traditions. Um, I know it's kind of sad. Uh, but when I came to the U.S., I was adopted into her family, uh, and uh, we were able to also understand the special moment that we're going through now, the special time when we celebrate the Messiah being born. Um, you know, unfortunately, I didn't grow up with that understanding. Um, I grew up with the understanding of on Christmas Eve, we'll shake each other's hand, we'll give each other a hug, and then we'll go to sleep. And um, now I look back and I realize just that's just how our family was. 
but I also realized how many, how many memories we didn't make it uh, because we didn't really fully understand what Christmas was about. Uh, for us, it was just another day. But I'm thankful that God got a hold of me. I'm thankful that I surrendered to his will. I'm thankful for my wife, for her family, for introducing me to all the traditions. I'm thankful for each one of you this Christmas season that we got to learn a little more about your traditions. Uh, and that's really what I take from me, you know, the blessing of continue, uh, this, this feeling of the presence of the Lord, this feeling of his loving and care and forgiveness and mercy towards my life. And I hope that you feel the same. I hope that you were able to see how God has been so good to us. You know, every time that we look at a little figurine of Jesus and we see the little animals next to and we see the wise man and we see Joseph and Mary, you know, that's, that's something that reminds us of this miracle uh, that we have in front of us that Jesus was born to give us new life. So my last part that I wanted to share was this one. This was one of the ones that was so special that I took a picture. As I mentioned, my daughters move, would move my nativities. Sometimes I was happy about it, sometimes I wasn't. Um, but this was one of the times that, I, that just caught my attention. The night before, all the men were facing, all the, the, the characters were facing their back towards Jesus, which is in the middle. And I asked uh, Juliana, what, what are they doing? They're protecting baby Jesus. And then the next day, I saw this one. They're all turned inside toward baby Jesus. But she took one of our coasters, and she put baby Jesus on top of the coaster. Well, the coaster we got from one of the youth councils, and the coaster on it, it said, greater things. And I know she didn't really think of that, but baby Jesus was right in the middle where it said greater things. And that really spoke to me and how God did that. I know my daughter just is trying to make it pretty, but what a message did God have for us during that season that with Jesus being the center of our life, there is greater things for us, for individually, us as a church body, and for us in the world. I'm thankful for the Lord for Jesus being and bringing greater things to you and to me. We began our celebration of the coming of Christ this Advent season by lighting the candles of the Advent wreath. We light them to remember Jesus, who was born Christ and King, and we remember that he will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us. The first Sunday we lit the candle as hope and faith, Mary was filled with hope and faith. The second Sunday of Advent, we will lit the scandal of candles of love to remind us that Jesus brings us God's love and show us how to love others. Okay, if I want to. First or the second? You see, I have a problem with that. <laughs> My hands can't do it. Third Sunday, we celebrated joy. Joy cannot be brought of our mood. Joy comes from God. Okay, let's see. Right from you. Today, we light the four candles of Advent, then a candle of peace. Okay. The prophet Isaiah, the 
prophet Isaiah called Christ the Prince of Peace, when Jesus came, he taught people the importance of being peacemakers. He said that those who make peace shall be called the children of God. Today we light the candle of peace to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace and that through him peace is from, from peace has found. We light the candle. I like it. No, this one don't light. Well, the, the, we light it already. Maybe it's please okay. me. Peace is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate, we celebrate the peace we find in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the peace you give us. We ask that as we wait for all your promises to come true and for Christ to come again, that you will remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your peace with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. 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 If I made a mistake, I light the candle. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you left it there.
Is Jesus Messiah. He's the reason why we come together and he's the name that we worship. Father, as we reflect on the words of this song, we can help but to worship you, Emmanuel. The one that was brought to this world to rescue us. What a feeling, Father. What a reality. What a day. Father, each person may come, may came here in a different way. Maybe they have different things in their hearts this morning. But as we lift our voices and we say, all our hope is in you, Lord, may that be true. May we live that those words all our hope is in you all the glory to you lord because you are the light of the world and oh and how much light this world needs father help us to also be this light as we engage in conversations 
as we engage in relationships, as we meet people in the supermarket, as we gather as families. And Father, we do have lots of expectations, Father, of knowing what is next. What else do you have for us, Father? And maybe this is selfish, Father, but we're excited because we want to know what's in store, Father. We want to know how you're going to surprise us, Father. You want to know how you're going to just wow us. So, Father, help each person here in this church to be at the edge of their seats, to wake up every morning looking forward to see you, Looking forward to see how you're going to act. How you're going to uh, manifest himself among us, Father. So many times we're not in tune and we miss those opportunities, Father. But you are everywhere. And if we take the time to concentrate, to pray, to read our scripture, Father, we're going to see your face. We're going to see your Holy Spirit throughout our whole day. It's about a changing of attitude. Father, be with us. We're so thankful, Father, because we have seen your hand in this core. We have seen healing. We have seen people reconnect. We have seen your protection. We have seen and received your blessings. Father, we love you. And we can't wait to see what else you have for us, Father. Be with our core. Be with our families, Father. We need you. Jesus, Messiah, Emmanuel. It is in your name that we pray this morning. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. We meet you here, Lord, at the intersection of love and faithfulness. Hear prayer and praise join hands. Scripture is embraced and our voices unite in hymns to you. Speak tenderly to our hearts in this hour of worship. God of all creation, and show us a path to peace. Hallelujah. Good morning. My name is Oscar Rodriguez, and I'll be reading from Luke 2:25 through 29. Next, I'll be reading 36 through 38. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and, de and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been re revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he, wa he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, So, so Lord, as you promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. There was also a prophet and a pro. Oh no. 
There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to redemption of Jerusalem. Bless the word of the Bible. And I heard that for next year, if you pay $50, they'll go sing outside of your house. Um, I'm just putting out there. Now, thank you. Thank you for all of you that are organized. You know, there's a lot of people that as we come to the last Sunday Advent that I want to thank. Everybody that participated um, on the different program elements, the Julianas, the Waits, the Jewets, and the Needons that will be leading the first Sunday in January. Uh, those are can't help but to always comes back to this idea that 
Our church is so loving. It's so caring. There are so many people with great talents. There are so many people with good hearts that always wants to help and wherever is needed. Uh, and I'm very blessed, both my wife and I and my family, we're very blessed to be here in Port Charlotte. And we really appreciate each one of you. It is a collective effort. Uh, it takes all of us to be able to decorate and plan and participate uh, and worship together. And to worship together. And um, again, my heart is full of joy to be able to see week after week the wonderful things that God is doing among us. Amen? But there, to, this morning I want to talk about two characters that usually uh, we leave them out of the story during the time when Jesus was born, the Christmas story. You know, we don't, we don't get a Christmas card with their picture. Um, there's no Christmas carols about then. And in fact, this week, and I wrote here five, but I asked two more people this morning. So I asked seven people this week, just quickly, and said, when you think about the time when Jesus was born, the Christmas story, who do you think about it? Who does it come to your mind? Answer fast. Don't, don't open your Bible app. Don't, don't, you know, just, just say it. Just say it. And I got most of the same answers, you know, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, the wise men. And we usually leave those two individuals out of the story. So those are the two people that we're going to be talking in a little bit. So first I want to tell you what's taking place here so we can put, the, you know, a little context on the passage. According to the law, when the, when the um, woman becomes pregnant and she gave birth to a son, she was unclean for seven days. And on the eighth day, the boy was supposed to be circumcised. I say this all the time. If you want to know more about circumcision, we have two coronels here. They can tell you more about it, okay? And according to Leviticus 12, this was the law. And I want to read for you from verses 6 to 8. This is what Leviticus 12 says. Reads, when the days of her purification, we're talking about the mother, for a son or a daughter is over, she is to bring to, to, to the priest at the entrance of the tent for a meeting a one-year-old lamb for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a dove for a sing offer. She shall offer them before the Lord to make an atonement for her. And then she will be ceremoni ceremonially clean. From the flow of blood. Those are the regulations for a woman who gives birth to a boy or a girl. But if she cannot afford a lamb, she was to bring two doves or two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering and one for a sin offering. This way, the priest will make an atonement for her and she will be clean. So, this is what's taking place here. They're following the law, the Old Testament law, the law of Moses. That when a woman gives birth, she is unclean, and then she goes through this process of purification. On the eighth day, the boy was supposed to be given a name to have circumcision and all that. This is what's taking place here. And now we come to the passage that Oscar read for us. On the eighth day, that's Luke 2, starting on verse 21. On the eighth day, when it's time to circumcise the child, he was given the name of Jesus. And the angel, that was the name that the angel has given to him before he was conceived. When it came to time of the purification rites required by the law, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Verse 24. And to offer a sacrifice and can be what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves and two young pigeons. pigeons. Basically, Joseph and Mary was following the law. They were fulfilling the Old Testament law. And then comes to the part where they're presenting the child at the temple. This ritual was of purification and brings us to the main point. When Joseph and Mary have two very unique encounters, godly encounters, on the temple. Of two people, they were very anxious, waiting for the Messiah. And that's the part of the story that sometimes we stop reading just before and we don't go that far. Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 35. And there was a man named Simeon. Simeon is our first person. And what do we read about Simeon? The, uh, the Oscar read for us that he was 
devout, that the Holy Spirit was with him, that he received a vision that he was going to see the Lord. The scripture doesn't tell us if it was an angel, if it was a dream. I couldn't find anything that tells how he received it. It wasn't a text message. It wasn't a Facebook message. That I know for sure. It moved by the Spirit. He went to the temple. So now think about it. Uh, again, if, you, if you've been here for a while, you know that your captain's mind sometimes is just wondering around different parts, and he wants to understand how things. So think about Walmart on Black Friday. A lot of people. People was going all over. You know, I, I used to go out on Black Friday with my wife before we had kids, and, and I stopped doing it. Uh, I just, just, just can't handle it. It's too much for me. Okay, but imagine the temple, a lot of people. And Joseph and Mary are inside with this baby. And then the angel tells Simeon, go to the temple because the baby is going to be there. It has to be something from the Lord. You see, on Black Friday, if we go inside a Walmart and somebody say, meet me inside a Walmart, I can't find anybody inside. I can't. I'm sorry. It's too, it's too crazy. But the angel says, like, go inside the temple. And then we see here in verse 28 that he, he holds Jesus. Simeon took him in his arms and praised, the, praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you, now, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen salvation, which you have prepared in sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and all the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother was marveling about what he said about him. Then Simeon blessed him and said to Mary, this child is destined to cause the falling and raising and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your soul too. That's strange. So, you know, but, not, but at this time, think about it. Joseph and Mary, they were not like, maybe it wasn't all strange because they have had encounters, random encounters before that. Had the angels, had the shepherds. So, you know, it wasn't a one-time thing. There were several times where they had interesting encounters. So maybe they were getting used to already about that. But how, you know, who is this man and how he got involved in Christmas? You know, he kept the Mosaic law. And we know that the Holy Spirit was guiding him. And he connects with that couple. A couple that probably was just blended there in the temple. Maybe nobody was even noticing this young couple inside the, inside the temple. You know, at this time, there was no angels following Jesus. There was no glow in his head. They were just blending. But Simeon connects with them. And that was the moment that he was expecting. But why are we sharing about him today? And I think there is three important statements that he made it that connect with us this morning. First of all, he said he's the glory of Israel. He's basically saying that he's the fulfillment of all the prophecies. All that was to us to come was in that baby. It was in that baby. Jesus Messiah, Emmanuel, the one that has come to bring us salvation. This would be a great place for an amen. Jesus Messiah, the one who has come to bring us salvation. The second thing that he say, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for all people of Israel. You see, that's great news here. He's saying that it's for all, all who is willing to receive him. Jews, Gentiles, male, female, slaves and free. 
black and white, every nation, every tribe, rich and poor, young and old. We all check that box. We all fall in that category. He has come for you, he has come for me, for all that we willing to receive. And then the third thing that he say, this child will be the falling and rising of many. Why did he say that? Because you see, as, as we know, many have a, has accepted Jesus and many has denied Jesus. And nothing has changed to this day. But here's the thing. You and I, we can't be neutral in our relationship with Jesus. We can't be neutral. We can't be neutral if we say that we know him. We can't be one on Sunday and a different one Monday through Saturday. We can't be one online, but then be another one in our real life. This child is calling all of us to a relationship with him. And this child is the one who connect all of us under the same family. Then right after we see our second character, there appears in the next verse. There was also a prophet, Anna. What do we know about Anna when we read the scripture? That she was a daughter of Penuel. We know her tribe. We know that she was very old. We know that she's a widow. And we know that she lived in the temple. She was always in the temple. She was praying. She was fasting. And then we see on verse 38, 38 that coming up at the very same moment, she gave thanks to God and she spoke about the child to all, to all who were looking forward for the redemption of Jerusalem. At the same moment, she, was able to, she wasn't able to contain herself. She had to share with all that was looking for that hope, that was looking for that peace, that was looking for redemption, that was looking for a fresh start, that was looking for what's next. You know, I shared earlier about my lack of family traditions. I grew up going to church maybe twice a year. We'll go on Easter, we'll go at Christmas. That's when we used to go to church. And I could not understand this whole concept of worshiping him. To me, everything was a ceremony. To me, it was basically, this is when you stand, this is when you sit, this is when you say this, this is when you say that, now you go on your knees, now you pray this. That's how I grew up. But then we see here that both cases, be, you know, Simeon and Anna, they were ready. They were eagerly waiting. They were excited. They had an expectation. They were looking for the redemption. They were looking for the peace that was to come. They were looking for the change that was to come. And then we see that Anna was sharing the good news. With all who was looking for. You see, both Simeon and Anna were waiting for the consolation of Israel, for the redemption of Jerusalem, for the peace that they were looking for. You see, this Christmas season, I want to invite you to include Simeon and Anna in your Christmas story. To eagerly wait to what the Lord has for us. Oh, wow, well, Captain, but the Lord has done many things for us. It's like, yeah, amen to that. I understand that. But if you don't have an expectation, then you're limiting the power of God. God can always do something more to amaze us. Amen? He always has something more to amaze us. We can't get to the point and say, okay, Lord, I got it. All that you have for me. We can't limit His power. 
We can't limit His goodness. We can't limit His grace, His compassion, His opportunity to have a new day and to grow closer to Him and see how God is going to amaze us. You know, for many people, we're waiting for the 25th or the 24th to be able to get to see what we're going to get physically. Can't wait to see what's under the tree for me. And that's okay. But there's something that will last longer than anything that we can receive. There is something that if we were able to stand today and share, you know, how long have we been in our walk with the Lord and what the Lord is doing, that's going to oversee, that's going to last longer than anything that we can get, any stuff that we can get this Christmas. So I want you to include Simeon and Anna and also eagerly wait to what the Lord has next for you. I don't know what that is. I don't know how you came this morning. Maybe your next is healing. Maybe your next is reconciliation. Maybe your next is battling an addiction. Maybe your next is sadness and you're looking for what God has next. And I'm not just saying to you that you should like, well, Captain said that I just need to wait. What's next? I'm just going to cross my arms. I'm going to take a nap and I'm going to sleep. I won't do nothing because the Lord's going to do something for me. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we work hard, we apply the scriptures, and we let God amaze us. God has more for you. God has more for me. And also be like Anna. Share the blessings of the Lord in your life. You know, I, I, I always, when I think about sharing, uh, I think I shared with you guys maybe two, three years ago, one of my sermons. And I remember when I got my first cell phone. It was in Brazil. I was working at territorial headquarters in Brazil. And I remember, funny enough, I was the gopher, right? That, that's the name, right? The gopher, the boy that will go do whatever the officers wants me to do. So pay a bill. Go get this. Go get my car to all your change, wherever. So I was that guy. And I remember that I got a cell phone. It was a Nokia. It's like it was this big. And it was heavy. And you made it like five calls, and you have to switch the battery because you run out of battery. And the screen was orange. There was no text message. It was only and you, and 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 we. I felt so cool because you know you, you open the flap, and you pull the antenna up. To be able to get reception, and then inside of my office it didn't work either. So if I got a call, I had to go next to the window. But the point is, I got a cell phone, and the territorial commander of the Salvation Army didn't have one. The boss of the Salvation Army in Brazil didn't get a cell phone. I got one before him. And I remember that when I got, I never tucked my shirt in. But when I got a cell phone, I started tucking my shirt in so I can hang my cell phone next to the side so everybody could see that I had a phone. And that thing was heavy. So I'm walking like this. But the point is, I couldn't contain, but to let everybody know. But that's so insignificant when compared with our story of salvation, our story of what God has sustained us, our story of how God has brought us here to this point. And we should also should not be able to contain, but to let people know about this loving God that we serve. Amen? That's not something just for you. It's something that we are to share with the world. Especially now. Especially now. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for 
the word. I thank you because we see that you have more for us. Father, forgive us, Father, the times that we have limited your power in our lives. When we have doubted. Forgiveness, forgive us, Father, the times that we're not really excited to, to, to be with you. The times that we doubt it. The times that we maybe were ashamed to share of what you have done in our lives. Father, this Christmas season, help us to be bold, to proclaim to the world that you have come to bring us salvation. Young and old, black and white, male, female. And Father, let us share with this world that may don't know you in love. Use our testimony to be able to bless others. Father, help us to be centered in your word. Even during difficult times, and especially during difficult times when we maybe feel a little lost. Father, there's more for us. Help us to be, to have that wow moment. Just like Simeon had it. Be able to say, my eyes have seen the Lord. My heart has felt your presence. Help us to have that moment of Anna and say, let me tell you what the Lord has done for me and what the Lord can do for you as well. Help us to share with our co-workers, friends, families, to be able to pray for them. Father, we thank you for the Charlotte. Poor child core, Father, for the many people and families that we worship together, that we serve together. Be with us, Father. And we're thankful for your love, care, and mercy. And we're thankful, God, for sending your son to die for us. We don't deserve. We really don't deserve. But thank you. Father, we love you. We thank you. And we pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ and God's people say, Amen. close our time we have our closing song hark the herald angels sing it's um good the words are gonna be on the front of our on the powerpoint um and i just wanted to bring us to some of those words that are on there we know this song well hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Are we reconciled with the Lord? Are we together? Are we together not just with the Lord, but with our brothers and sisters in Christ? With, um, are we making peace, being peacemakers wherever we go? That's a question for you. Let's stand together and sing our closing song. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of 
I think I might have done the chorus wrong. There we go. That's what I did. I repeated the last lines and didn't sing our chorus right. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the new world king. That's the right chorus. Let's sing our verse number three and we'll sing loudly um, that, that, that chorus where we say the newborn king. And the newborn king is in each one of us. Let's sing that verse number three. Hail the heaven voice of peace, hail the sun of righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen healing in his wings. for being our newborn king. And Ms. Lola will come with our benediction. This morning as I prayed about and reflected on the benediction and the words of encouragement to give you as you left here, I thought about and came to my mind who actually knew the reason for the season? Who actually knew Jesus? Well, Abraham did, and uh, I guess Ezekiel did, and Moses certainly did, and Aaron. They, before he even got here, they knew he was coming. John the Baptist did. Mary knew Jesus. Joseph knew Jesus. King Herod knew Jesus. He knew what he was coming for. He wanted to wipe him off the earth and kill him. Three wise men knew Jesus, shepherds knew Jesus, and they knew the reason that he was going to be the reason for the season, why he was coming for us to bring us joy. So today, if you feel sad during this Christmas period, the way some people do, it's a period of time people feel sad, please don't. Joy to the world, the Lord's come. Let us receive him. If you don't know him, get to know him. Uh, King David knew Jesus. Okay, and King David told us, said this in Psalms 144.15, Happy are the people who are in such a state. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Okay, you want to be happy? Get to know the real reason for the season. Okay, amen. Go in peace, go in joy.